dollar. All right, I'm just gonna get Renzo to open his door for me so I can check every single room for money. Yes? Did you find the pages? Just slide them under the door. Uh, oh, that's been uh, going on for a while here now. Thank you, Sinerina. Keep them coming. Alright, I don't need to interact with the door repeatedly. Perfect, Sinerina. Is that all? No. Grazie, Sinerina. Did you bring any more? Thank you, Sinerina. Did you bring any more script pages? Very good, Sinerina. Do you have more pages? Thank you. Do you have uh, more pages for me? That is perfect. Do you have any more pages? Thank you, Sinerina. Do you have more pages for me? I'm cleaning house. I cannot thank you enough, Signorina. Come in, Signorina. Now oh, that is um, fascinating. I'm just gonna distract myself with puzzles first. Puzzle number one. Oh, easy. The first and last letter of each name is uh, highlighted. The L stands for 12. Suggesting that O stands for 15 and I stands for... Uh, I do not... It's a four-digit number, so it cannot stand for one... So R stands for 18. 18, 15, 18 15 um, 81. And that's all shortcuts opened. Yay! I uh, find. All right. Give me that laser eye, Nero. And I see a dollar there. Great! I found two of them already. One there. One over here. Turn them on. No. Did I not get an achievement for that? Give me your eye. Well then. Interior theatre. Day. Smokeless thick in the small tawdry theatre. On the hardwood stage, a magician performs. His coat sworn and mended, but once it was expensive. Lorenzo the Great! But the last the young mademoiselle Henrietta de Bois could not escape a sordid fate. He yanks the handle to his erisotrope. What's this in erisotrope? Is, is it like a camera of the day or something? As in the silhouette of a man stabbing a woman appears on the wall. The crowd stares stumbly at the shadow and they smile with yellow... Oh, it's like a shadow movie machine. Is that it? The crowd stares stumbly at the shadow and the smile with yellow teeth made for biting. Lorenzo looks at the audience with disgust. He takes another real liver, the third eye, for bothered use only. He hesitates, but puts the wheel in its contraption. The next story is not meant for the likes of you. It's something I normally only show refined, ladies and gentlemen. But I'll make an exception tonight. The sire d'ugly eyes of yours shall see something new. Or else the end Thousands of years ago, the third eye shone over the island in the far east, but on one night it fell from the sky. A comet passes on the wall. Strangely enough, it quiets down the crowd. They follow the comet while gaping as it crashed to the ground. A human found it, and when she held it, she saw the magic of this world. She had a vision, so she painted the creature in red ochre on the cave wall. The cave paintings show up all over the wall. The crowd is a bit confused by the effect. At night, the crimson beast awoke. It spread chaos and death and devoured the human and the people. A red monster appears. The crowd screams in terror as it attacks them. Some of them have in had enough and flee the theater. Lorenzo slows down as the beast disappears. The story of the red creature became a legend, but the third eye lived on and appeared in the most unlikely of places to this day. That is all for tonight. You have been a wonderful audience. Go away.
the quiet mutters and leaves. One man, better dressed and cleaner than the rest, remains in his seat. He studies Lorenzo with his eyes. Brother Tertius. When Lorenzo discovers his presence, his pupils dilate from fear. The room is dark, besides the many lit brass candelabras. Lorenzo stands with his hat in hand. Fifty men in robes watch him from a long table. At the end of the table, a stern old man ponderously strokes his sideburns. Brother Septimus, a young brother, opens a mahogany case and takes out an ornate revolver and a minotaur mask. He looks over at Brother Septimus, who nods to him. The young brother puts on the mask and aims his gun at Lorenzo's head. Play safe and never path. Gamble to pass or perish. Truth above all. Risk my life, brother. How many were of first aged brothers? Seven. Correct. The seated brothers raise their goblets and drink. What is the punishment for sharing a secret with outsiders? Lorenzo grabs hold of the table and is about to faint. Death. Correct. Lorenzo closes his eyes, but death does not come. Under normal circumstances, you would be dead now. I'm sorry, old elder brother. I was not thinking. We're innocent, perhaps it's a crisis of faith. Forgive me, brothers. Thankfully for you, these are not normal circumstances. The time is nigh, little bro brother. And like in the old, we shall send seven brothers in search of that which was lost. All brothers hold up seven fingers. Six have already gone searching for omens. You will be seventh, the disgraced one. Where will you send me, elder brother? Augenwaldburg. There lives an artist in an old manor. The prophecy mentions her. Go and see, brother. If that which was lost is there, Lorenzo nods. The lady suffers from an eye condition that will ultimately render blindness. A sad fate for a painter. Takes his familiar in tears. What does he do, elder brother? Nothing at all. But you will use them, pretending to cure the lady. That is your guise while you search her house for the third eye. Hoof, hoof's clop echoes through the dilapidated courtyard. Algae covered statues silently await the arrival. A pale, sickly horse comes into view, pulling a wagon painted red in a distant past. Lorenzo walks beside the horse and leads it by its reins. Lorenzo ties the horse to an old oak. Be brave, Morse. You have nothing to fear. Lorenzo approaches the front gate. He bangs the knocker. Lorenzo scans the dirty windows for any signs of life. Finally, the door, finally the door creaks open. And instantly, Lorenzo raises his top hat and takes a bow. A white rose appears in his hand from his hat. The miracle has arrived. A national woman in an expensive dress stares to him with milky eyes. Renate Schwarzwald. I do not believe in miracles. That is why you need one, Baronin. Lorenzo hands the white rose to Renate, which changes the color to red. You might as well perform for the shadows. My sight is fading away. Your eyes are fading because there has been nothing to see. Weary eyes need entertainment, and tired souls need miracles. Who are you? Lorenzo the Great, at your service, Baronin. A magus whose name is whispered from the shores of Zandibar to the frosty peaks of Helsinki, known to beggars and kings alike. Well, you are not known to me. Good evening. Renata is about to shut the gate. Wait! Renata waits. My journey has been a long one. My horse is tired. And, to be honest, so am I. Renata looks at a very sickly looking horse. I had four once, during better times. But ironically, more is the only one who lives. Very well. An oversized dead goose lies on the oaken dining table. Lorenzo devours his portion in a loud manner. Renata tries to hide her disgust. Is the room satisfactory? Yes, I slept like a piglet. So it was not you I heard last night? Lorenzo drinks wine and coughs to buy some time. I was up briefly, yes. He takes out a small vial from his sleeve. My vermilion tears. They need moonlight to not, not to lose our magic. I took the liberty to use one of the windows in your studio. Renata looks amused. I took another liberty and studied some of your work. The portraits are of course excellent, but I am most intrigued by the drawings of signs. My Him Himmelskörper suite. What inspired them? Magician, might I ask you a strange question? Who am I to refuse an answer? Did you see a labyrinth while you were in the park? A labyrinth? A red labyrinth. The only labyrinth I saw was the portrait of a man with a labyrinth instead of a face. Renata stands up angry. 
I've made no such portrait. You lies have ceased to amuse me. I know why you are here, and I know where to look for it, but I will hold you for to your word. Lorenzo looks like he's about to assure another of his pure intentions. Cure my eyes. The curtains have been drawn. Renata lies on top of the bed, a trace of a smirk on her lips. Lorenzo looks gravely serious on the side of the bed. Are you ready for your miracle, Baronin? Yes. Lorenzo spreads a single drop of vermilion tear into Renata's left eye. She blinks, and Lorenzo drops another tear into the right eye. It might be a few days before it takes effect. Renata's eyes start to boil, and she screams in unfiltered agony. Lorenzo backs away in horror. Lorenzo holds his hands over his ears to protect himself against the looping, deafening screams. Everything turns black. It's just eye drops. It's just eye drops. It's just eye drops. Then, quiet! Lorenzo stirs to life on the floor. He sees Renata lying lifeless on the bed. Lorenzo checks the pulse in a hurry. She is still alive. Apparently, he has, at some point, put a bandage around her head. Two red dots mark the eyes, giving Renata a disturbing appearance. Baronin, can you hear me? I can hear you, magician. They tell me you are not invited. I invited where? To the cavern. I followed the echoes of my screams. They were waiting for me. Uh, who was waiting for you? My ancient sisters and bro brothers in the Far East. They're sharing the secret with me. But they won't share it with you. The cavemen think you're an obscurious ignoramus who built us existence. But Arunin, you must rest now. The labyrinth, the true on the wall. Go and see by the window. They say I should defenestrate you. But we have an agreement. Defenestrate, such a lovely word. Lorenzo slowly touches against the window. Moonlight shines on his weather bitten face. He looks out the window. A giant garden labyrinth has appeared in the park. Do you see it, magician? Yes. Do you see me in the labyrinth? It's very dark. Yes, I see you. Do you see you? What do you mean? Can you see yourself in the labyrinth? Uh, of course not. I I'm not there. Neither am I. Lorenzo turns around and bumps into Renate. The red dots in the bandage have grown substantially, looking like giant red bug eyes. She puts her hand on Lorenzo's face. The room turns red. Lorenzo gasps in disorientation. He is now somewhere in the labyrinth. Lorenzo quivers from fear. Renate smiles at him. Her bandage is gone, and a pair of lovely hazel eyes look at Lorenzo with affection. This is the place for my childhood. I am over there. Renata points behind Lorenzo. He turns his head to look. A girl wearing an owl mask watches him from behind. Owl girl! She runs and disappears behind a corner. Renata takes Lorenzo's hand. Come! Together they run into the labyrinth. Renata seems to know her way, while Lorenzo is trying to make sense of the strange space. A red hue suddenly appears before on their hate faces. It's the most beautiful thing they have ever seen. A smile with tears running down their cheeks. The light grows stronger and the cosmos plays music just for them. The curtains have been drawn. Renata lies on top of the bed, a trace of a smoke on her lips. Lorenzo looks gravely serious on the side of the bed. Now I've already done this one. Renata's hand moves frantically across the canvas. Lorenzo sits in an armchair by the window with his top hat on his knee, posing for a portrait. There is movement inside his top hat. I think it might have been a maze, not a labyrinth. Aren't they interchangeable? A labyrinth prolongs the past, while a maze is for getting lost. And we are lost. It's a big enough house. It can sometimes be disorienting. We have seen it. I think the price of admission might be an eye and a leg. Lorenzo leans forward, and his hat falls on the floor. Red Owl flutters out of the hat in front of Lorenzo. He stares at it in surprise. That was a very clever trick, the owl is on top of the bookshelf. And when the red th third eye blinked, the red beast laid an egg within. The third eye closed, and their bastard offspring was born thousands of years later. Renata studies the canvas is, is a bit confused. A realistic portrait of a man in a dark suit, but where his head is supposed to be there is a red glowing maze. Renata notices two tickets in his hand and she takes them, stares at them. Teatro Rosso. An excited, faceless valet points at the red curtain. 
Lorenzo and Renate look at each other and then step through it. Rows and rows of seats. It's much too large to be inside the manor. Lorenzo stares in disbelief at the giant theater. It seems empty, but the murmuring from the crowd is deafening. Gaslight illuminates the stage. Someone clears the suit behind them, and a featureless usher points towards the first rows. Renata and Lorenzo silently descend the stairs towards their seat. A fun fair! The light dim. A man dressed as Lorenzo and wearing a Lorenzo mask rides a prop horse onto the stage. What is this? Lorenzo knocks at the door mid-stage, mid -stage, and an actress wearing a mask resembling Renata opens the door. Applause. The light intensifies on stage and blinds Lorenzo and Renate. On the stage, a comet hanging from wires passes. Renate and Lorenzo avert their eyes. Then the comet is gone. The stage is empty. A lone hesitant clap from somewhere further back. The actress playing Renate walks on stage. She holds her hands in front of her, her blood flowing from her eyes. Please hold me! The actor playing Lorenzo steps on stage purposefully. Lorenzo and Renate watch the theater alter egos on stage in grim silence. Their hands join. Lorenzo drags the stylist pop window onto the stage. Renate wanders, sobbing blood. Lorenzo tries to place the window in front of Renate, making her fall out. The crowd house who is laughed as Lorenzo gets more frustrated every time Renate misses the window. Please hold me! Please hold me! Finally, Lorenzo had eno has enough. He grabs Renate and shoves her with full force through the glass window and from the stage. Renate lands with a sudden uh, 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 crack. Theater the blood squirts into Lorenzo's face. Lorenzo forms a fist and rises. Enough! Lorenzo watches him silently. So he had the boo. Let's go. But Renate is gone from her seat. In fact, she is nowhere to be found. Lorenzo is, looks around in panic, but it's like she vanished into thin air. The actress playing Renate comes back to life and is elevated by strings into air, the air. She bows and receives applause. The actress turns her head to Lorenzo and takes off the Renate mask. Beneath it is a featureless face. To be gifted is to be infested. Ideas are tiny red eggs in your brain. To the microscopes, it still looks the same, the good and the bad. Ah, oh, but look at the time. Lorenzo slowly walks off stage, his footsteps echoing through the empty theater. He moves towards Lorenzo. Lorenzo turns to run, but his doppelganger catches up with him. The doppelganger removes the mask, and behind it, Maze Man, his head buzzing in an electrical manner. She is waiting for you. There is an idea. Follow my daughter. The maze puts his hand over Lorenzo's eyes. A disoriented Lorenzo finds himself in the hotel corridor. A phone rings somewhere. Further down the hall, he sees the owl girl. Where is she? The girl flaps her arms and hoots. Enough games! The owl girl disappears from a corner, down a corner. Lorenzo stomps after. The owl girl waits for him at the end of the next corridor. Suddenly, a black Labrador runs up to him and barks. Lorenzo looks at the dog with surprise. His tag reads Rudy. Rudy likes, lies down and plays dead on the rug. As he does, Rudy changes from black to white. Finally, the dog cramps and then contorts into a cat. A payphone rings on the wall. Lorenzo lifts the receiver. Why are you answering the phone? The remains silent. There are no phones in 1847, you cretino. Lorenzo grants. Hang up the phone and go chase the algo, just like the script says. Lorenzo hangs up. He sees the algo with a limp cat in her hand. Lorenzo runs after her, corridor after corridor. Lorenzo runs fast, with determination. But the algo is always around yet another corner. He never catches up with her. Lorenzo run turns a the corner. There is no algo, but a mirror. Lorenzo sees himself briefly, and behind him stares a man in sunglasses and a dark suit. Lorenzo regards the man in the mirror. But the mirror changes and Renata appears, levitating like a ghost. Starry sunglasses obscure her eyes. I am waiting for you upstairs. I look serious, so you might want to go check. Renata vanishes from the mirror. Lorenzo left with the image of himself. He looks weary. He turns and goes. His footsteps echo through the empty manor. At the end of the dark hallway, Lorenzo sees a dark shape. Lorenzo very slowly approaches it. It's Renata with a back turned against him. Lorenzo stops. A long silence. You keep sending the wrong goose to the butcher. Baronin? Baronin? I think the Baronin, Baronin would perhaps he, talk about her ascension. She could say something to the effect of... <clears throat> I have good news for you. We are not artists. We are not even art. When it comes down to it, we are all ha just... We are all just paint. Aren't you happy with this news, magician? And he would say... Lorenz keeps the signs in defiance. Why is this so hard for you? 
Why do you think of these things? This is unimportant. There are symbolic values and mirror images, yes, but none of this matters, Signorina. Had you read my manifesto, you would have known it was never meant for viewing. Please, Baronin, let's leave this place. Every maze has a solution. You really understand nothing at all. But if you're understood, you would have never played your part. Time for entertainment. Here is her last performance. Granata stands slowly around. Her face is hidden by shadows. Lorenzo takes a step forward. Her eyes are empty craters. Red paint turns down, runs down her cheeks. Hold me. Oh, please hold me. Lorenzo backs away. Please hold me. Please hold me. Lorenzo backs further. Renata's arms flailing, searching for him like tentacles, paint dripping everywhere she goes. Please hold me. Lorenzo's eyes widen with fear as she comes closer. Her touch disgusts him. Suddenly Renata increases her pace and she touches his face. Please hold me. Lorenzo instinctively pushes Renata with full force. Smiling, she falls towards a large window. The Brunin crashes through it and down to the ground below. Lorenzo stares at the window in shock. He steps towards the window. Rain patters against his face. On the gravel path below lies a mangled corpse. This... I think this just might explain everything. Lorenzo is not... Lorenzo. Lorenzo is... Lorelei. That's why it's Lorenzo. Or maybe he's a bit of both. He comes in as a mysterious stranger giving... Mystic Wisdom And then it's just a Stooge playing to the tune of a Insane artist And I think Renz I, d I don't know if uh, Renate or Lorenzo were actual real people Lorenzo probably not because his name is just a combination of Lorelei and Renzo Renate might have been a real person who actually owned this manor And he wrote A uh, well, a fairy tale basically about her and uh, the ma mage and the labyrinth, and now he's basically reacting it with himself and Lorelei and the maze, and I don't even know if the cult is real. And he's basically wants us to kill her for. What was his manifesto? Uh, art that is not. with no, with no audience. He just. It's a, it, it's a play for him and her, for Lorelai, basically. She's the only person who witnesses it, and it, it kind of broke her. That's what happened. Jesus. 